Manitowish Waters Historical Society presents an interview with Bill Hembrook, November 7, 2018. Bill Hembrook was interviewed by Janelle Cole and John Hansen in 2018. Hembrook grew up coming up north every summer. The family would travel three times a summer to vacation in the Powell area. Around 1957, they purchased and cleared land on Dead Pike Lake. The cottage was built in 1959. Learn why Dead Pike Lake got its name and who vacationed on Sherman Lake. Hembrook's family was related to the Sherman family who homesteaded on the Powell Marsh. Discover more interesting information about the Powell area. Please take time and explore this video and we hope you enjoy. Thank you. Day November 7th. 2018. Uh, Bill, how long have you been up here in the Northwoods? Well, my first year that I came up here was 1950. Uh, I was here in June of 1950 for the first time. I was four years old. In fact, I caught my first fish that year. <laughs> And where is it that you uh, have had moved to in here in Manitowishwa? Well, we uh, we lived in Fond du Lac at the time, and but we've all we've always had a place. My dad was here in 1927, and uh, so he's been around here because we had relatives that were on the corner of. Sandy Beach Lake and Paul Marsh Road, and they ran a hotel and um, general store there for from about 1900 on to 1954. So we had relatives. Actually, the very first relatives were homesteaded on the Paul Marsh. Um, now, what were your parents' names? My parents' names were Bud or Clarence Hembrook and Mary Hembrook. And Clarence is spelled C-L-A-R-E-N-C-E -E. -E, yeah. and Hembrook H-E-M-B-R-O-O-K? Correct. And then your grandparents? My grandparents were Elmer and Pearl Hembrook. And they're the ones that were related to the to the Shermans and they owned that the general store and the hotel. Bill Sherman, who was named the very last township in southeastern Iron County, Iron County mm -hmm. is named after Bill Sherman. So they were up here in the eighteen eighties already. Prior to coming to that place there, I think they did some mining up in Hurley area. Okay. They were involved with that. So <clears throat> the place where they were located, we refer to it as Powell. Powell. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. on the corner of Powell. Right across from the um, where the railroad station was forever. Mm -hmm. That little station there. Oh, was that in Manitowish? That uh, was in uh, town of Sherman. I, I always call it South Western Manitowish <laughs> Waters. <laughs> well, it's actually in... Because actually, our whole lake, oh, okay. all the people on our lake are related to somebody in in Powell at, back in the early days. Okay. Like Gail's wife, her father had a deer hunting shack right next to Sherman's. Okay. So here is the southwestern of corner of 42 North 5 East coordinates. Yeah, this is where I caught my very first fish, Sherman Lake. On Sherman Lake? Across Law, it was called Lost Lake at the time. The sign on 47 was, it was a walk-in lake. Okay. And that's, is this the Sherman Lake where you're... Father had 
nobody was there. There was, no one was there. Okay. a priest from Chicago owned the, the very back end of, of way back here. A priest back end, here. Yeah, a priest owned a cabin there. And that was the only person that had actual driving access into do you, there. Do you know about when that would have been? Or? Well, my dad and uncle knew the caretaker real well. He used to let him in deer hunting. And uh, so that was, the earliest part would have been 1938. That's the first year they deer hunted. Okay. So it was, it was at least before that that he owned that. Okay. And when he died, the caretaker just kind of took it over until he died. And then when he died, the DNR took, to say, uh, took the whole thing. That's a big part of the Paul Marsh now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So when your dad came up, you were saying in 1927? Yeah. Where would he usually go again? He'd always stay at, at that time at, at the Sherman's at the hotel. I, If my book was around here, there's pictures of everything. It's oh. in the library here. Because oh. uh, Gene put it in the library. Okay. Gene Wolf. Yeah. So there's there's pictures of my dad on a cut-off stump in, in Sherman's front yard. And he's the tallest one in the picture because the stump is so tall. And a great big pine tree. Oh, and he's five okay. years old. And who wrote the book? You did. I wrote the book, yeah. It's all about the history of the people's of Dead Pike Lake and yes. Powell. Yes, yes, we have that. I probably yeah. have it over there. Okay, so, um, well, we'll have that on camera and on the recording. Okay. Okay, very good. And what was the name? You were talking about a store? Yeah, Frank Sherman's General Store, Frank or Sherman's General Store. Oh, okay. And it was right on the corner of Sandy Beach and Powell Marsh. At, at, in the early days, that wasn't called the Paul Marsh Road, it was called Star Lake Road. Mm -hmm. When I first came up here, it was Star Lake Road. Because oh, okay. it connected Paul to Manitowish Waters. Mm -hmm. That was the route. Yeah. And that's the route that Capo, or not, Dillinger yeah. uh, got away at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Frank Sherman's General Store. Right. Okay. Uh, before your, your father had come up here, what did he do? Or what was his profession? Well, my, my dad, uh, first of all, was in the Marines in World War II. He was a professional baseball player before that with the Yankee organization. He played for the Fond du Lac. Panthers. That's where he met my mother. And uh, after then he went in the Marines in World War II and then he came out he, uh, he worked odd jobs for a while right after World War II. Then he became an engineer at the Waukesha Motor Works. He, he was, uh, took classes at Marquette University and got in. He had a friend that was in the ownership of the Waukesha Motor Works. And he became an engineer in the Waukesha Motor Works. And he traveled to Saudi Arabia and all over working on engines. He was on the road tour for Waukesha Motor Works. He had a good job. And your grandparents? Your My grandparent, or, or, my oh, grandpa my was a professional house painter. He, he had a Model T Ford pickup truck that was had every color of paint in the world on it. <laughs> it's like a villa they go on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, where, where did he work? Waukesha. He was from Waukesha. Oh, okay. That was the Hembrook's hometown. In fact, my daughter lives between Waukesha and McQuanago right now, in Vernon. Okay. My great grandfather homesteaded the Vernon Marsh in in Vernon Junction between McQuanago and Waukesha. Oh, okay. 
So mm -hmm. that that's where we are. That side of the family is originally mm -hmm. from. My grandmother's side of the family is from Moquanago, and she's a uh, daughter of the American Revolution. So so is my daughter, a daughter of the American Revolution, because mm -hmm. we have relatives that were all the way back to the American Revolution, and and that was. Uh, some of those people were uh, were politicians. Mm -hmm. so, Glenn Davis, I don't know if anybody remembers him anymore. He was a state uh, senator, or uh, was a representative guy, and he was from there. How did they discover Manitouche waters? Through the relatives, the Shermans. That was my grandfather's cousin. Frank Sherman, and they used to, and my parents or full family is big into fishing and hunting, and this was a great area back in the early days, was a great area. In fact, the, the person that lived next to Frank Sherman was Cal Parker, and Cal guided for uh, the big resort down Deer Park Lodge. Mm -hmm. In those days, that was a big, mm -hmm. huge resort in Manitouche Waters. And Cal was their number one guide. The other guide was Cal Doriette. His, they have a place right on the corner of 47 and 51, right behind a dingling, that house. Mm -hmm. That's Doriette's house. Okay. So those were the people that died, guided Deer Park Lodge. Eisenhower stayed there. And they guided him. Mm -hmm. And this was back in the. 20s. That was back in the third, probably 20s, the thirties. It was before World War Two. Mm -hmm. He was a c coming up general. That I think mm -hmm. he was stationed in the Philippines, and he was home on on leave and came up here fishing. Mm -hmm. He liked fi a lot of the presidents liked fishing in northern Wisconsin. Several, if you read of them, like, like uh, Coolidge. Mm -hmm. um, Teddy Roosevelt, they, they fished in this area up here. Mm -hmm. And so it turns out you came up as a small child then? Yes, I came up because I like to fish. Mm -hmm. And you said you got your first yep, right fish in out of, what did you and say, And it was about walleye? a foot long perch. A foot long perch out oh, of Sherman yeah. Lake. Yeah, it was, it was, that was a good fishing lake. Mm -hmm. It was the first lake the Indians speared in 1986. It's right off the reservation. The reservation's right here. Mm -hmm. In fact, this line, or the reservation line. Mm -hmm. So you love to fish. Do you remember eight when you caught your five, fish? Four, actually. Four going towards five. Probably real close because we always came up in June, and my birthday is June 16th. So it was probably pretty close to being, because I was born in 46. But four. Mm -hmm. For sure, four. Um... What else do you like to do when you're here visiting? Oh, we just what everybody does up here. You swim and and uh, run around and and right out. Our old cabin was on right next to Harvey Mouse, who was the game warden up here at the time. That Gene's brother, uh -huh. um, and uh, we had a big sand pile outside the cabin. See, when you were a kid, you played in it. Sand pile, and, but fishing was the big entertainment. That was, and when you'd come up here, would you stay for a very long time, all summer? We or? usually stayed, no, not all summer. We usually stayed a week, and sometimes two weeks, depended on the vacation of my dad. But we always stayed for at least one week, a lot of times for two weeks. Mm -hmm. But we might come twice a summer, because mm -hmm. we, we, we'd work it around uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day too. Mm -hmm. So three, three times. Were there any other um, youngsters your age that you made friends with that um, you've known since? There was, there was some people that had kids that stayed at Parker's place too, and so I got to know. And they actually built a house over here on Paul Marsh Road. Shannyville, what they call that over there. Parkerville. Yeah, Parkerville, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I can't think of their 
named Mary Uchitz or something like that. Mm -hmm. He had a he taught up here for a while. He got in trouble some way. Dan, that was his grandparents. I can't think of his name right now. I think it's in the book. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they were they were they were up there too. The the kids a little bit. I didn't really know them all that well, but yeah, we played around a little bit. Mm -hmm. As far as kids that uh, lived up here, um, all the people that were at that time were, oh, I would say in their 50s and 60s, so their kids were gone already, like Cal Parker's gone, or were, were gone. I did know his daughter and her daughter, but I, they were never up here. What about Pelkala? Were they here before you got here? Phyllis was... Uh, is a little older than me. Okay. So yeah, Pelkolas were here. And Linquist were next to Pelkolas, the two old cabins on Dead Bike Lake. Okay. Right, I knew them pretty well. Yeah. Now I don't exactly know when they came up here. They were here earlier than we were. So they were here at least in the early 50s and maybe even earlier than that. Phyllis would be the one I'd have to get to her exactly. But she's a few years older than I am. Mm -hmm. Well, they came down from Ironwood, I think. Uh, he was a, he worked at the mill, uh, the, not uh, the logging mill. Okay. He, they made logs, Bill Pelkola did. And Lindquist was a, I think is electrician if I've met and worked at a place and his his son I think is over on the chain now okay. someplace mm -hmm. and he he's an electrician too but he's he's fairly old now too he's like my age or older mm -hmm. so you went to school in down south I started at Fond du Lac and in 1954 my dad got the uh, engineering job for the mm -hmm. Milwaukee or the Waukesha Motor Works. I moved to Waukesha. I graduated from Waukesha High School in 64. And then I came to Point to go to college. I was interested in natural resources. And uh, I played football and baseball at Point because I like sports. And, uh, and then I then, of course, Vietnam came along. Mm. That really messed me up. My county ran out of draft kids. So what they did is they put all the kids that were in college in a pool, a lottery, and they pulled, they needed kids for September, October, November, and December of of 66. And I got lucked out only lottery I ever won. <laughs> I got five kids were picked each month, and I was one of the five for November. This is my lucky month. Yeah. <laughs> so you so, didn't did did you go in the Vietnam War? Well, my dad had been in the Marines mm -hmm. in World War Two. He was at Guadalcanal, Bougainville, and Tarawa. Three of the really bad ones, and. He told me, you're too big to be in the Marines or the Army in the jungle because you're just too big a kid. So you got to join. So I joined the Air Force. And it took, it cost me four years, but I didn't, I never was in the, I was in Vietnam, but I never was in the fighting. I, I was where there was shooting that's going on, but I was always on the air base. And I was on, I had a good job because I had college. So I, I, had a, I was a crew chief, a head of F-4E fighter aircraft. I had five of these that I took care of, my crew. Well, that was a good job in those days. You didn't, the only thing is I worked all nights because I didn't like to be sleeping when they were lobbing these mortars and stuff into these bases. So I worked at night and slept during the day. And that's one thing I required. <laughs> but no, I spent uh, 
three years in Southeast Asia. Then I got, got out in 1970 and September went back to school. But I had to change my, my advisor told me, Bill, you can go back into fish biology because I, I wanted to work in a fish hatchery. And he says, you can, but there, there's absolutely no jobs for 10 years in Wisconsin. He says, I can set you up out on the West Coast in marine biology. I didn't want to go back. I, I just been away from Wisconsin for four years, so I, I didn't want to do that. So I shifted into education, which there was jobs. And it took me two longer as I had to go back to school two years longer to regroup. But no, then I, then I was in education for, that's where I met my wife, at Auburndale High School. Uh, Auburndale High School. Yeah. Okay. That's halfway between Stevens Point and Marshfield. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had good athletes. I've got Mark Tauscher played for the Packers for 10 years. He was mine. Jordan Zimmer is pitching for the, for the Detroit Tigers right now. And he, I just saw him the other day, and he says, I'm making $30 million a year. I think I passed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've had good players. Yes. I got 11 players that are coaches in high schools in the state all around. Well, they had a so, good coach. Yeah, that's the best thing because they come back and talk to you then. Mm. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And you were there, you said, for 30 years? Yep. 30 years, and you met your wife there? Yes, and, I did. Uh, and and do you have any children? Yes, we have a daughter in, in between Waukesha and McGuanagall. And mm -hmm. we just had a, our first granddaughter the 20th of June. So, and boy, is she a star. <laughs> she, she's got it made. Yeah. Oh. Especially when Grandma and Grandpa are And they're old, you know. Yeah. Grandma and Grandpa are like our age. And that's the first one that's, she's got it made. My oh. wife just adores her. We'll get a picture a day. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's very, very nice. Very sweet. Now, when did you decide to, now, do you, do you own a place up here now? Yeah. My, my dad and I cleared, bought this, actually, we bought the land on Dead Pike Lake. For twelve hundred bucks, back in those days, you could do that stuff up here, mm -hmm. and uh, we cleared the land. The old, the old guy that was on it was couldn't do it anymore, so he sold it to us. But we did we did go through a Evans, the Evans. and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we bought the, that, cleared it out in nineteen fifty seven and fifty eight, fifty nine. We built the little place. And, We've added on to it four times. The last time I, I redid it all, it's, it's every bit as good as my house at home now. And uh, so it's a nice place. Mm -hmm. And where about on the map here? Please? It's right next to, well, it would be right here. Right mm -hmm. here where you live. Right there. Okay. Yeah, right. Gail Wolf is right a little bit on the on the core right there. Yeah, he's yeah. next to me. Okay. And then all there, there's a list this way. Mm -hmm. There's 26 places on the lake, on which the lake. isn't many when you think about oh, it. That's a pretty good lake. sized lake. Yeah, mm -hmm. over half of it is state owned. The, the property around it, so it's pretty nice. The lake's got some interest too. It never was always named Dead Pike. Back in the 20s and early before that, it was named Genevieve. We discussed changing it back one time, but there is another Genevieve in Vilas County, mm. a lake. Okay. That's what I was told. Mm. So we couldn't use that name. So it just stayed the name it was. Dead Pike is not exactly a illustrious name. <laughs> But the reason, I guess, from what I've studied it, because I wanted to find out, wait a minute, why is this name Dead Pike Lake? And the reason I was told was that one year they had a freeze out. And their 
and there was dead fish laying along the shore, and that's how it got its name. Now we've never, I've never had, a, I've been here since 53 was the first year I, I fished on Dead Pike Lake, and I've never seen dead fish in the spring. So we've never had a freeze out again, I guess. And I doubt if that would have happened because of the depth of that. Yeah, lake. it's 80 feet deep. Yeah, so I think there's another story. Yeah. I, have, I heard another story, and I can't remember the details. Oh, okay. But if I think about it or if we're talking at our historical society, maybe somebody will jog our memories mm -hmm. about how it got that name. It had something to do with somebody that came to fish there. Oh. And... I, I can't remember much more than that, but I never heard the freeze out part. Well, when I was doing the study of the lake, the peoples, <clears throat> of course, the first cabin on the lake was was Colonel Sandberg's. Okay. And that was owned by the Chicago Mafia. That's where he bought it from. Mm -hmm. They originally owned And I know this because I, I met a lady at a fair at Monaco and we got talking and wolves were with me and then she said oh you're on Dead Pike Lake I went there when I was a kid and she was 87 years old and she, she said I went there when I was a kid we used to stay and it was they stayed at at this place that Sandberg bought okay and met and she made she said, well, that was owned by the Chicago Mafia. That was one of their places where they came up to vacation in. And in Colonel Sandberg, well, Colonel, he was a colonel in World War I. Mm -hmm. And he bought that place. And he was still alive when I was up there in the early 50s. Because mm -hmm. he had a reputation. It never happened to me. But some of the people said, hey, if you got down on his end of the lake, that bay, he had a tendency to squeeze a shot off over your head. <laughs> so you can believe that. There was <laughs> there was some weird people around here. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was an early day terrorist. <laughs> but no, he didn't like people at being in his area there. He thought he owned that whole Ooh. thing. Now, I knew his daughter better than him. Phyllis. Oh, Phyllis, yeah, Harrington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Phyllis was all right. She was all right. Yeah. She'd have been a lot better without, yeah. you know, who I'm yeah. talking about. In fact, um, she went to school up here in the fall. Oh, okay. When they had the scare about polio in the cities, you know. So a lot of the kids that came up here in the summer stayed through the fall and went to school here until the polio threat was over in the cities and then they go back to the cities. So, so Phyllis, uh, Phyllis and I are, I think, about the same age, probably. Okay. And uh, so she went to the school here in the fall for a few years. So. Hmm. Didn't she do a lot of work with the lioness or with somebody before she died? She was involved with a group yeah, up here with some group. and did yeah, did, yeah, did something. Yeah. I know there was good there was good stuff, yeah. but she was all right. But he. He was always tough to deal with. Mm. Not just with our group. He was always tough to deal with. Anyway, I mean, somebody caught him shooting a, or capturing a loon one time and chased him. Oh, the longs. The longs oh, okay. chased him, and he had a loon stuffed in a minnow bucket. And they, they wanted him to let that loon go. Well, they chased him right up on his pier. And they got the loan out of that and got let it go. <laughs> so he was always a problem. Uh, Why would you want a loon? For one thing, they're a fish-eating duck, yeah. and they would be terrible tasting. Yeah. I mean, God, just terrible. Mm. Now, do you have any siblings? I have a sister, and she used to come up here. Okay. She's 10 years, 9 years younger than I am, mm -hmm. and she lives in East Troy. But she used to come up here a lot. I've, I've got a picture of her up here. Mm -hmm. so. 
So how many years since you've been, how many years of retirement have you spent up here? So well, far? I had a stroke in 19, or 2000, 1999, and that ended my career. And so I've been basically retired. I, I taught one school year after that, but I couldn't, see, I, I couldn't learn the computer. The place where I had the stroke is on the right side of my brain, your learning ability. And uh, I never, I never could learn the computer. And it was right at that particular time, and they were putting everything on the computer, grades and uh, attendance and everything, had to go through the computer. And I never learned it, so I could teach my subjects. No problem with that. Problem. But I, and I never got affected speaking or anything. I, I don't have any nerve system in my left side of my body. But I still, I fish all the time. And then I'm hand-eye coordination is not as good. Although I went duck hunting with Gail Wolf one time and I shot a double and he was just amazed. <laughs> you know, because I it takes hand-eye yeah. coordination to, to do that. And I still had enough left that I could do that. <laughs> but I don't I don't do I partridge hunt, but I, I shoot a lot more air now. <laughs> and I had a group of guys that I went out to South Dakota pheasant hunting with, and the la one of the last years I went out there, we always had kind of a contest to whoever got the most birds got won a prize at the end. Well, after I had the stroke, I I was pretty much out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be darned if I didn't luck out and have a good year out there one year, and I won the most. And of course, we always had a party at the end when we broke up to go back to our places. And I says, don't you guys feel embarrassed? You got beat by a retard. <laughs> and of course, I won't tell you what they said to me. <laughs> but I still have my times where I'm all right. Mm -hmm. And we can laugh about it. I'm not riding a wheelchair. And I, very, I have a friend who had a stroke basically the same time and he's this right like this yeah. and I almost can't go by him. I do because we're friends but he is not in good shape. He's lived 20 years with being frozen in a wheelchair down here. Yeah. It's just terrible and I, well, I had the same kind of stroke so I've been lucky. So you've been up here for almost 20 years. 20, it'll be 20 years. It's 18 years this yeah. year. Um, it'll 19, well, mm -hmm. actually it's coming up on 19 uh, yep. after I had the stroke. So. Mm -hmm. and you added on to your house that many times. And yes. Yep. And I've got some, I did a little work this, I didn't do it. I hired a guy to, to do put two new front windows in my place. It's really nice now. I cleared out, cleared a lot out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to have some stuff to, done next spring. But you got to keep updating otherwise, you know, it's so damp up here that it round the windows and that it'll decompose. So you got to keep doing things. And I, it's a nice place. And I gave it to my daughter. Mm -hmm. So, and she loves it. So. It's always going to be, it, I'm hoping that the little girl likes it, and I think she might, but, you know, I'm hoping it always is in the, it's going to be in the family at least through my daughter, because her husband loves it, you know, so they both really like it. And they, he grew up up here too, because his grandmother owned the cabin two doors down from us, Krieger's. That's how my daughter and him met each other. Oh, and they were up here. So, yeah. Oh, my. And my parents and his grandparents were great friends. That's how they got up here to begin with. They came up here. It's kind of a funny story because Harvey, it was the grandfather, and he comes up here and he, uh, they were uh, talking on the way up, and he says, you don't have any electricity. Well, I got to stop at the drugstore and get a 
razor. All I got is electric. <laughs> <laughs> so, but two weeks later, they bought land and they started their place. So they've been up here since '64. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you know, it's it's unbelievable the connection between old Paul way back and what. Like I talked about Long's, mm -hmm. Mrs. Frank Sherman, Susie Sherman, is related to the Long's. She was the postmistress for Paul for 30 years, 30, 40 years. So there's a lot of connections yeah. with Manitowish Waters mm -hmm. and Old Paul. Much more connection than there would be, like say Mercer was a was a bigger place at that time, and that's where people went to go grocery shopping, and that was, was Mercer, because 47 to Mercer is only like uh, 10 miles versus coming through the backwoods here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's quite a connection there. So your daughter spent a lot of time up here. Oh yeah, she, she loves has, it. Has many Many memories. They, they've got five um, Alaskan Huskies or Siberian Huskies, and they these dogs pull dog sleds mm -hmm. like the Iditarod, and they're in a group called the uh, Door County Sled Dogs, although they're not from Door County. Some of the people that run it were from there. And what they do is every weekend they go to a park somewhere along the east coast of Wisconsin, uh, Milwaukee, Kenosha, Racine, on up to Green Bay. Mm -hmm. And they give rides to kids with these dogs, sled dogs, and for 15 bucks. And then they donate the money to the shelter houses for food and for, for taking care of the dogs and stuff. And so, but they love that. So they come up here and they got to be pretty good friends with the people that run the Discovery Center up here, the trails, mm -hmm. and they let them go on their trails with these oh, yeah. sled dogs. And that's a nice run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So last year though was the first year that they've been up here. It was so cold that the dogs wouldn't go outside. <laughs> Otherwise they love this. They'd be nuts today with this yeah. little snow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it was cold last year. That weekend they came up four days. Mm -hmm. couldn't, couldn't make the dogs go out. <laughs> Wimps. <laughs> yeah, that was one of those rough weekends. Yeah. Now, when you would come up to visit on a week, on a week here and there, yes. How did you get up here? What kind of transportation did you use? I, was there? I always came in a car. Even the very first time we came, we had cars. But my grandfather was an engineer or a conductor on the Chicago Northwestern Railroad. Originally, way back in the from World War One on on up. Um, the other, he was the, my mother's grandfather. He was my mother's father. My dad's father used to get a pass from him, and they'd come up on the, on the railroad, and they get Paul was a stop, mm -hmm. and so and same with Gene's father. Um, he had that cabin next to, he he was a guy at Kokana. I think it's Kokana. Mm -hmm. And he was the dispatcher okay. at Kokana. Mm -hmm. And he used to come up on the road on a train. And all the deer hunting group, Sherman had a deer hunting group, about 12 people. And they all came on the from World War I till probably the the trains. after World War II. They, they were, came on the train. Yeah, they were discontinued. Um, I've got in I that book, I've I got was, the last train. And I, it sounds like a Clint Eastwood movie. Last train to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they discontinued those runs, I think, when I was in yep, high school, or just out of high school. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I, I came up on a train mm -hmm. when I was a little kid one time uh -huh. with my grandpa. So uh, it was interesting. They stopped at Powell, and there was an, actually a guy out there um, with a lantern kind of waving it down so they knew where it was at. And it was very interesting. I enjoyed it. Yes. Uh, what were your living conditions in your cabin? Oh, was very that? rustic in my in the early days. From uh, I was always outhouse. Uh, we had uh, what we call the slop pail for mm -hmm. taking care of it. And the refrigerator was an ice box. It was covered by a big, huge tarp from the paper mill. And it, you, Cal bought ice, a hunk of ice every two days, and for the for the keep things cold. He did have a stove in there. Mm -hmm. And the beds were were fine. Was I mean, they the weren't. You didn't cabin? have the button to press the. And I got had gas stove. Yes, it was gas, and gas refrigerator. Servel yeah, Servel gas refrigerator. refrigerator yeah. And gas lights. Yes, gas mm -hmm. lights. In fact, until I redid the cabin in 2000, the last time we had gas lights in our place right now. You know, they're still there as decorative, mm -hmm. but we don't use them. Mm -hmm. I installed many of those dudes in my day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah People were always very infatuated by the gas lights. You know, when we'd have guests, and you turn them on, you know, because they poof, you yeah. know. Yeah. And so they were always infatuated by the gas lights. Mm -hmm. And the mantles were made out of, uh, I don't know if it was nylon or orlon or something, but when you burned them, they became very fragile. Oh, the mantle is yeah. very fragile. And it was very common for them to break, so one of our big sellers was mantles for gas lights. And you can't use a lighter because the butane blows the mantle up. Yeah. You can't use the you got to use a match, yeah. and you got to keep it far enough away. Yeah. Don't get it too close, yeah. you know. And then poof, it lights up this little mantle, and it glows. Yeah, a yellowish, uh, more and more yellow than a than a regular light bulb. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting. Yeah. yeah, back in the old days, it was, uh, and I call them old days because they were. You were, mm -hmm. but that was all part of the mystique of coming up to the cabin. Everybody liked that. I don't think anybody got a real big kick out of going to the outhouse. But um, <laughs> otherwise, the, the, the other stuff was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, did you Were you aware much of what was going on in town during your visits? Well, I, we used to go into uh, Mercer or, or Manitowoc Waters. Or, I remember the old store. Um, here with the, they had a picture of it not too long ago with, with he was standing in the George, doorway. George yeah. Laporte, yeah. And I remember that. I remember those people. There was two brothers, I think, wasn't there? No, George was the only one. There was like, yeah. there was four brothers. There was another, yeah. There was four brothers. But I only knew that one. Yeah, but he was, he was the grocery store guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he was an interesting, same with Harry down here, I knew him real well. Yeah. And uh, Harry's grocery store, Harvey Krieger always stopped there when he come up at the very first time. Him and him, him and Harvey, they got a big kick out of each other. Harvey would go in and say to Harry, Harry, where do you find time to mark all these goods up when you hear that I'm coming up? <laughs> Yeah, Harry still plays cribbage with us. In fact, oh, we'll good, be, he's still around. We'll huh? play, play he's a good guy. Life. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to tell him that I heard about. Yeah, Harvey. tell Harry. Yeah, and tell Harvey, Ma, Harvey uh, Krieger, just yeah. to come up and ask him where he found time to <laughs> mark all these goods up before he was coming up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we knew quite a few people up here. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I first wrote that book, I thought his dad and maybe even his brothers were the Hansons that were in 
uh, the deer hunting club over there. Because oh. right as you go across the railroad tracks mm -hmm. on, on the Palm Marsh Road, there's a house on the left. Well, there was a, that house was owned by the Hansons, Hanson Brothers. Okay. That's what my dad always said. Mm. And they deer hunted in that club. And I always thought it was, because I knew Ralph and I knew that Ralph had a brother. I really didn't get to know John until later, mm -hmm. but I did know Ralph. Yeah. And I thought it was them and the, their father that were in that deer hunting club yeah. way yeah. back. Mother Hanson. <laughs> yeah, I was. A, I found that out later. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like I said, everybody was connected to yeah. everything over there. Mm -hmm. Did um, your father? Did he? Um, was he up here during the Powell fire at all? Or not that I not that I know. The first he was a a little kid, at like five years old, in nineteen twenty seven. <laughs> There's a picture of him in the book, and uh, that's the first that he was up here. Mm -hmm. And the fire, I think, was before. The, the oh, fire no, was 47. The, that was the train. The train caught them, that didn't was, it? It was in, uh, I think it was the year I was either a junior or senior in high school. So it was in 53 or 54. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, he would have been, I he wouldn't have known of it because he never told me of it, but he would have known of it because, yeah, uh -huh. he was up here in, 38 deer hunting already mm -hmm. and 27 when he was a little mm -hmm. kid visiting relatives and and fishing so mm -hmm. sure yeah he knew everything that went up on around here mm -hmm. he was up here in fact more than my great grandfather or my grandfather who was related to Frank Sherman mm -hmm. my dad was up here more mm -hmm. and my dad's brother uh, was up here a lot too, and he's been dead a long time ago already. But the ugliest cabin on the Paul Marsh, the yellow cabin on the Paul Marsh Road over there, that's his place. Okay. His son painted it. That no, <laughs> we didn't like it. <laughs> but it, they, he still owns it. He yeah. he still pays the taxes and he comes up. He likes to hunt and fish too, but. His health is not real good, mm. but no, <clears throat> yeah, he's a Parkerville, and the the cabin to the, the left of him is Long's brother. Okay. Yeah. There's not enough land there to put a septic system in, mm. and Aww. Broad won't uh, give him enough land to put a septic system for Long's place there. It's a not, not too bad a place, but they can't do anything, so he can't sell it. And a guy did buy it with the idea that he could do it, and he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. so there's not enough, not enough, so. Hmm. So you've seen a lot of things change from when you well, caught your <laughs> yes. fish in, in uh, Sherman Lake. And well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always been interested in the area because I was in love with it right away when I was a little kid. I just enjoyed hunting and fishing and that. And plus, you know, it was a lot of fun to come up here. Mm -hmm. And you still enjoy coming up here. Oh, yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would never get rid of the place. I mean, if it, my daughter wanted, you know, I, I had mentioned it that I was thinking about, because I was getting a lot to take care of. I said, I'm thinking about selling it. Oh no, you can't say, no, we'll take care of it, so. And they have been, so that it won't get, it won't get sold. It'll always be in the family unless something happens after them. So, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping this little girl likes it and I, I kind of yeah. think she will. She will. Because, mm -hmm. Her mom and dad like it, so that's pretty, pretty unusual if she wouldn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, and the dogs love it. <laughs> <laughs> so you were up here when there were no phones, or was there oh, a phone? <laughs> nope. No Party phone. lines or you anything? You know, we we 
when we wanted to call, we had to come to the corner down here. They always had a phone out in front of the phone company, uh -huh. right on the corner of Paul Marsh Road and 51. Mm -hmm. And we used to come once in a while when I was up here alone, mm -hmm. I'd call home and I'd just come there and put coins in. And mm -hmm. Back in the old days where you put coins in a no, phone. No, pay phones. <laughs> no, it was, it, like I said, it was rustic when you came up here and that was part of the aura of coming up here. Mm -hmm. You know, you like that. And you know, one I can remember going to the Little Bohemia one time when Amo was Amo was quite young then. I never knew the original dad there, yeah. but I knew Amo real well. Mm -hmm. And we got talking one time, and I had I had to be over eighteen because I was drinking, or over twenty one. So it probably was 1970 or so anyway. And he started telling me about the Dillinger story. And so I took all this in and, and you know, the story as he told it was much more interesting than the one that they did by the movie. Oh, yeah. You know, there was too oh, yeah. much shooting mm -hmm. in the movie because that didn't mm -hmm. happen. But there was a lot of interesting things that did happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that could have been done better. Yeah, we've got pretty good history on that. Mm -hmm. But it did help the area. I can remember <laughs> that, that year when they shot that film. I wanted to go over because I like old cars and they had some unbelievable old cars in that movie that they had brought in. So I wanted to go over the day they were shooting and watch some old cars. Well, they had everybody locked off out on Highway 51. <laughs> you couldn't get any closer to there. Yeah. So, But I did get to look at them. I had binoculars with me, so I did get to look at And there was a lot of girls over there, young, young girls, teenage girls, and they were looking in there, oh, Whoever the star was, and that, there he is, you know. You couldn't have been, I, it could have been John or me, you know. You, they wouldn't have known, but they were all excited. <laughs> yes. well. So that was an interesting time that when they did that movie here. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, it had a it had to be great for business for Little mm -hmm. Bohemia for years. Oh, it still Cause, is. Yeah, because boy, they had people. Wow. And and one thing I will say, I I like wild I like duck, domesticated duck. Mm -hmm. Nobody has better duck than Little Bohemia. They forever forever since back in the fifties they've always had very good duck. They're well known for it. Mm -hmm. Doriettes had duck down on the corner of the the dingling too, mm -hmm. but I. Never went there as much. I, we went there to eat, but not like we did there. Because once we got over here, this is so much closer. And Krieger's really liked a Little Bohemia, so mm. we went there a lot. The old rustic um, down by Harry's, we went there. Silverdale. Yeah. That's when it was when Tylockers had it. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Wow. But that was a popular place. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the first place I ever remember having smoky cheese and crackers. They had smoked cheese. Uh, and they put it out before your meal and crackers, and it was just delicious, that smoked cheese. I never heard of it before they had it. Mm. Did you, were there any restaurants around when you were younger and came up to visit? Oh, the, those, sure. those, those were when Bo you were young, Bohemian, Bohemian. Rustic. Um, Voss's was... Voss, Vo, Voss's. Mm -hmm. and then, oh, yeah. Um, Deer Park was still... Yes, Deer Park. Yeah. Uh, what's the Carters. one? What's the ones that's in the canoe place? Oh, can, well, it, Circle of the Lodge. Circle of the yeah. Lodge had it. Mm -hmm. And at, when the great people were running it, it was darn good. Yeah. Well, Lafine started it. 
Yeah. And then and, the, and the old uh, hotel at one time had yeah, a good place. Northern Lights Seagrass. Yeah. Now I heard it's pretty good again now. Yeah, that's the uh, Aurora Borealis. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there was enough mm -hmm. places to eat. In fact, two of the bigger places to eat that people went to were um, way up by Presque Isle at Skyview, Skyview yeah. and, uh, and then there's another place up by Hurley mm -hmm. that's the uh, same Lawn. name. Sky Lawn. Yeah, mm -hmm. they went to those places from around here yeah. when they wanted to get away. My parents and Kriegers went out to dance every Saturday night they were up here. They either went to... Um, over to Boulder Junction at the Headwaters, or up at north of Mercer, um, Jedarski's or something. Yukon. Um, yeah, Yukon. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they they always found that they were always having a good time. They enjoyed it. There was lots when, to do. When you think they lived in Wonkisha, it's a six-hour drive, mm -hmm. and they were up here every other weekend of the year. They alternated driving. So they, they must have liked it, otherwise <laughs> wouldn't yeah. have did that. Did they have any stories for oh, you from that, was, from that that seemed, um, made an impact in your time up here or? Oh, I'm sure that all the stuff I'm telling you yeah. about, I, I heard through, you heard through stories them. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those old places over in Paul, Cal Parker had a, a porch that he had every, every possible animal stuffed on that porch, you know that, and so he, and pictures and and stuff, so that was another place that, you know, you always got into talking about stuff like that. Yeah. I wonder if there's anybody around that would be not able, like that anymore. That would be able to reminisce about the Parkers because that was a interesting enclave out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, was it! <laughs> and there was a lot of people out there that, of course, they've been gone for 50 years now. That um, Oscar Graybert lived right toward Sandy Beach, right after the creek. He he had a big place there. He was a fireman from Milwaukee. And when you were a fireman, once you got 20 years in, in Milwaukee, you were eligible for retirement. So he, he was 38, and he retired and moved up here. Yeah. And he, he built our cabin the first time. Okay. Oscar Graber, yeah. And the second part of the cabin was built by Schnell, Earl Schnell. Oh, okay. Earl owned the bait shop yeah, down here. Box, yeah. So mm -hmm. Earl and his wife were good friends of mine. Okay. I I went fishing with Earl and he was ninety five years old. Wow. In fact, the night Earl died, his wife called me and she says, Bill, I'm calling you to tell you that Earl passed away. But he says, I'm I'm she said, I'm not telling you that I'm telling you because he would have got a biggest kick out of how he passed away. He would have wanted you to know. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wait a minute. <laughs> well, what he did, she was reading in, they had a place out on Benson Lake. Yeah. And she was reading and she thought she heard Earl go into the bathroom. Then she did was reading and pay any attention. In a little while she thought, I never heard Earl come back out of the bathroom. So she went and checked and Earl was froze right on the toilet. He died just right locked up on the toilet. And Earl had a weird sense of humor. Yeah, he did. So he would have got a big <laughs> kick out of this. Yeah. And so that's why she called me. <laughs> you don't know whether to laugh or, gee, I'm sorry. Yeah. She was a nice lady too. Yeah. They, they were in their 90s. She lived quite a while after that. Yeah, and then she actually, she remarried. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I used to go out and see her. Every once in a while I'd take her some fish. She 
even I think had a had a guy that lived later on with her or something. Yeah, and they, they eventually got married. Yeah, yeah. well, they did. Mm -hmm. Well, good for her. Yeah. Well, she lived life for the fullest. Let me tell you. Yeah. She was a nice lady, yeah. and boy, mm -hmm. could she garden. She had a beautiful garden and flowers. Her African violets were by far and away the best I've ever seen. She had a whole porch in the sun, kind of like a, a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And those African violets were just beautiful, gorgeous. Yeah, she was quite the lady too. Uh, but yeah, all these people were up here. Did anybody make a, a particular impression on you? Any that one person? Pileated woodpecker right there did. Yeah, I just saw him. <laughs> oh. That's a big woodpecker. Yes. You don't get to see that. At times they were almost extinct up here. And now we're getting to see quite a few. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. What was the question? Did oh, you? if there was anybody in particular that left a real impression on you. Probably in the early days, day. Cal Parker, because he was a real, he was a guide. He was a real rustic guy, chewed tobacco, drank, spit, and I mean, he, he just, he would have an impression on a little kid. Yeah. He would. And... I can remember him coming in the store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he was um, almost everybody. Earl Snell and I got to be friends because we fished a lot together. Mm -hmm. And his wife would let him go fishing because he was really old uh, with me because she and I was twenty years old probably mm -hmm. then. Or, so we went fishing a lot. What was your favorite fishing lake? Probably the flowage. I've caught more fish out of the flambeau flowage than I, although I did really well on my favorite spot at night was the bridge by the marina. Mm -hmm. I caught more walleyes out of there than I used to go at night because you didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't want to go out in a boat at night. I'd go down by the marina down there and we'd have uh, these big gas lanterns. And when you put a gas lantern under, under a bridge, it reflects off all over. So it was almost like you were fishing in the daytime. And I caught lots of walleyes on the chain down here. Mm -hmm. So I think I probably started fishing there in 1962. And uh, I fished there till I had the stroke and couldn't walk on the rocks again. You know, otherwise it was a great place for me. And Dead Pike Lake right now is that Dead Pike big? Lake was a was a good fishing lake. Uh -huh. um, I I don't fish it now, but that's because it, we're trying to rebuild it back up. Mm -hmm. um, the The limit is eighteen inches now, mm -hmm. and they're starting to catch fish. So I think within the next five years, it's going to be pretty good. It was great at one time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was. The walleyes were nice, it was big northerns, big muskies, and crappies were huge. I mean, it was, well, my, my dad caught a 16 and 3 quarter inch crappie, that's about like that. And it was about that thick, so it, it was huge. <coughs> Did you ever accidentally get yourself in trouble with a warden when with fishing? And I actually, no, I, I never got, uh -huh. I got checked twice. But uh, I wasn't illegal. I really wasn't a person that... I caught enough fish that I didn't need to be illegal. So... No, oh, it's fishing I, first story. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I used to... We, when, when I was real young, my dad and I hunted with, with the warden from up here. Mm -hmm. And that was Gene's brother. So, uh, and I ran around with his son. You mentioned earlier about knowing uh, somebody in Freddie, mm -hmm. Freddie Maum, and his job later on in life, he graduated from Manaqua High School, Lakeland High School, 
and his job later on in life was a guide, professional guide. He even hunted brown bears in Alaska and Russia. He's got, I got a picture of him with a great big bear. I think that might be in that book too, mm -hmm. Freddie. And when he got a great big bear in Russia. So that was, he was, he was from around here and he end, ended up being one of the best professional guides in the United States. And he's related to Gene Wolfe. And we ran around together when, before I went in the Air Force that year. So, yeah, I've had a, a lot of things, good things happen to me up mm -hmm. here. This has been one of my more enjoyable places. Kind of a sanctuary for you? It is. It, it's, it's always was a place where I'd go to get away from you know, when you get things, so many things piled up on you in other places, uh, this has always been a kind of a nice place to, oof, you can get away from it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that says a lot about managed fish waters. And, you know, when I start talking about all these people, uh, I think, God, look at the influence they all had mm -hmm. on your life. You don't think about that sometimes because they've been out of your life a long time, but uh, they really had a big influence. And mm -hmm. there was always nice people up here that you mm -hmm. did things with. I even fished with I, the Anne, the lady that ran the bait shop in town that had the daughter that they had all kinds of Ann charity Clark. stuff for because yeah. she was so sick. Ann Kwiatkowski. Yeah. yeah, I fished with her husband before he died. We musky mm -hmm. fished together. Yeah. Because he always wanted to catch a muskie, and he knew I did a lot of fishing. So, believe it or not, we landed our boat right by the bridge down here on 51 and went in at Sturgeon and caught a muskie. Sturgeon was a real good muskie lake. Yeah. Had a lot of fish in it. So, yeah, I, and he didn't, I don't think he lived a year after that. He had a heart attack or something. Yeah. That was a bad situation there. She was a nice lady. And her daughter got so sick. I know the town had a lot of charity events for her because she had to go to for big time money. Cancer? I don't remember. Well, yeah. Was... But I know it was sad. Very sad. Yeah. In fact, I used to not go in there later on because I, I didn't want to deal with the because we were pretty good friends and didn't want to deal with the sadness. And mm -hmm. She stayed around for quite a while after they both mm -hmm. died. Didn't she have a son too? I think so, because you know, she moved over to Minneapolis after she okay. sold the place. So I think yeah. that's, who's, that's who's over there, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have any questions about any of the lakes, Tom? I don't think so. It's been we fun listening. We, yeah, yeah. I went through all the questions on here. Okay. Well, Americans. if you ever, like if you wanted to go through that book or something, that probably would flex my mind. One of the things mm -hmm. that I can remember is the Sandbergs making ice. They had a, they had a place where they put ice away ice in the ice. winter oh, part of yes. the year. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, because we all needed ice for the summer. Yeah. And they had a, a place where big bin sawdust with the ice and the sawdust. So if you ever were desperate for ice, you always could go get a Hanayanka ice from Sandbergs, not Sandberg, um, Pelclaws. Oh, Pelclaws okay. and Lindquist. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but, but there is a picture of them making ice in the spring of the year. Um, cutting with a big saw. Yeah, cutting big circular out and saw and it's rolling them out. The Jens Larson, who had the yeah. place, he cut ice on st stepping stone, the first stepping stone. Okay. There. And he used to furnish ice for all of the ice houses in town. And Dad had a big flatbed truck, and he'd haul ice sure. in, in the wintertime. So. Yep, those were the days where 
You didn't have any electricity to power your refrigerator. You used, it's called an ice box for a reason. <laughs> so, I don't know if you knew Cello Davati. He worked for us at the store for many, many years. So I remember the name. Yeah, his mother came over from Italy. So one day, they, they lived on a farm up by Bessemer. So one day he says, Ma, what do they call, what's the word for refrigerator in Italian? <laughs> and she thought about it for a while and she said, ice the box. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, <coughs> oh my. Yeah, lots mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. Yeah, for, there uh, was a, uh, a lot of fun I had over my lifetime in this in this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, Gail Wolf, then and Pete. Pete is more lately. Actually, Pete could have been my high school football coach. He had interviewed for the job at Waukesha High School okay. when I was there. Right. I didn't know that at the time. He's told me that yeah. since. You know, he'd like, you know Pete. Oh, yeah. He'd say, just think how much better a player you would have been <laughs> if I would have been your coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he's a, he's a good guy. Yeah. I mean, he, that and he was a good coach. Had to be quite a career. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's... That's the best part of being a coach is you get all these kids coming back telling you, not just the athletes, those students coming back and telling you how good they're doing and that. And that's the best part about the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you follow them too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, Bill, thank you so much sure. for being here and giving well, us your story. And yeah, I'm, it's always I'm glad fun. I got it done. He's, we've been talking about this for a while now, and it's I'm glad that I, I did come back up because I really think that you guys might be in the in the sand now till uh, probably May. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. This is too early. It's been a rough fall. Yeah. Yeah.